friends, it's your old pal Jordan the Lion. Well, as you saw the other day, my friend Kevin is in town. That was his music you just heard, and originally our plan was to go roam around Laurel Canyon and show them some of the old homes there, but they realized that they are flying out eight hours earlier than they thought, and they really wanted to see the Sunset Strip, so I'm going to take them up there now. We're going to look around and maybe we'll make it to Laurel Canyon, I don't know. But I think one of the stops we're going to make on the Sunset Strip that I haven't made in a long, long time, definitely not on this vlog, is we want to stop at the Chateau Marmont. So we're going to go meet up with Kevin and his girlfriend now, Days with Jordan the Lion, and you all begins now as well. Oh, and let's make it official. Well, as we're heading up to Sunset Strip, we're stuck in traffic here, and it looks like Jimmy Kimmel Live is about to do some sort of little skit with a gigantic basketball. Well, we kind of decided to detour up into Laurel Canyon first, and I wanted to do this vlog for a while, so I just decided we're gonna do it while we're here. Now, I've brought you here before, the Canyon Country Store, because Jim Morrison used to live behind here, the house on Love Street was here, but our story today actually kind of starts here because in 1968 Joni Mitchell took the royalties from Song to a Seagull and she bought a house right up this road and right after she bought the house uh, Graham Nash had moved here well was actually touring here with the Hollies they met fell in love and he moved into the house and they came here on their you know kind of local trips that they made all the time and it inspired a really popular song so we're gonna go to the house that our house was written at. It was owned by Joni Mitchell. She did a lot of her painting there, wrote a lot of her songs there. And since this is the only market in Laurel Canyon, this is the market that everyone has always come to. This is where Joni used to get her flowers. Do you feel the Laurel Canyon love yet? <laughs> And like I said, Jim Morrison lived right behind here. So Jim Morrison's house on Love Street that caught on fire was actually that one right there. Oh, that's the sage. Yeah. Check out the, all these photos of uh, people that used to live here. There's the mamas and the papas. There's the doors, of course. And there's the Canyon Country Store in the 50s. Now every year they do one of these community photos right out front, so I love coming in here and taking a look at those. Now when we go up to the house, this is actually the house that he describes with those um, the fiery windows behind her, and this is also the house that she painted the cover for Ladies of Laurel Canyon, and would actually write the song Ladies of Laurel Canyon in. Now, as far as I know, Joni Mitchell doesn't live in the house, however she's never sold the house for sentimental reasons. She loves it and the fact that it was so inspiring to her, she's never gotten rid of it. She's just always rented it out, so as far as I know, this is still Joni's house. Sorry, I, I always call that album Ladies of Laurel Canyon because I knew she lived here, but it's actually called Ladies of the Canyon. It's just something I've always called it. And speaking of, that's why we stopped here, so they could get some coffee. Well, there's the house. There's the house that our house was written in. That's where Joni painted her pictures. That's where she wrote Blue, Ladies of the Canyon. And that, this was actually known as a party house at the time, and this is where Crosby, Stills, and Nash formed one night. They were hanging out, doing a jam session, and yeah. Out of that came the three, the threesome, and then it wasn't later until later that they added Neil Young for like, they wanted to add a little bit of darkness, but it all started here, and there's actually a really famous photo of Joni, I forgot my other lens, but Joni sitting inside that uh, window. Now what's crazy is that the house that used to be next to here was uh, the canned heat house, and it caught on fire, and she thought it was gonna um, burn her house down, but it didn't, and what she believes is that the ash and soot that is on her, she has like a wooden door on there, she believes that the ash and soot that is in the cracks is like preserving the house from getting destroyed and that it's like an altar, so she's always demanded that that door stay there, which is pretty cool, and like I said, she has such a sentimental uh, attachment to this house that she's never sold it. It's, uh, it's always been in her possession, so it's pretty cool that 
that it's still here in that historic all those songs all those like nights of music that would have been created here like I said all the paintings that she would have done would have been done here and she was known for painting a lot of her her own album covers so great times I don't want to invade their privacy but uh, this would have had the yard in there where uh, with the two cats were in the yard life used to be so hard Now if you guys remember when I vlogged the Wonderland Air Force Base, I couldn't show you this because the gate was closed. It's now Jared Leto's house, but this is where they used to create a lot of those World War II documentaries for propaganda and uh, kind of the educational movies they would have the actors involved in for uh, morale and kind of show troops and everyone how to use some of the devices they were creating for war. Pretty cool, you can actually see the Wonderland Air Force Base sign still there, they've got a payphone out front. there's the Wonderland house. Since I was out showing them around, had to come by here and show the old Frank Zappa house where the utility muffin research kitchen was. Now it's Lady Gaga's house. Thank God somebody that appreciates this place has it. But man, what a history. Frank lived here for a long, long time. I mean, uh, like 25 years probably. And one of their requests was to come up here and see the chemosphere, so there it is. In all its glory, architectural masterpiece. And we decided to stop off at the uh, Universal City Overlook so they can get some good pictures, do a little uh, tourism experience here together. And right directly into there is Universal Studios. You can see the Minion on top right over there. And that's, yeah, that's where they, of course, have the Psycho set and all that stuff. As well as City Walk. So that's Universal Studios, you said, where the, where the Moon guy is? Or the, the Minion. The Minion. I yep. <laughs> That's the Universal Can you put Studios. This on camera? Yeah, this is the Universal Studios <laughs> opinion of, of Kevin Elliott is that he hates the minion. <laughs> very, very lazy concept. Lazy. <laughs> Kids don't. There's tic tacs of minions. Yeah. So now our next stop is we're going to hit the Hollywood Overlook. Let them see that one. So from up here, you can see directly into the Hollywood Bowl. That's what all that, that black seating is. That's Hollywood Bowl. And tonight, James Taylor is actually performing there with Cheryl Crow. So I'm going to take them up the, uh, the stairs trail that I showed you guys before. And there's the Hollywood sign. It's a pretty cool house up here. <laughs> On to the next stop. This tour bus looks like it's straight out of Laurel Canyon, doesn't it? All right, we're heading down to the Sunset Strip now. <laughs> well, there it is, right up there, the Chateau Marmont. Kevin really wanted to go in here, so I said, let's do it. We're inside, and I'm trying to figure out where the cover of this, oh man, I figure out where the cover of this would have been taken. Somebody told me they thought it was right there, actually. There's the, uh, the lobby, it's pretty awesome. Well, Kevin wanted to have a drink in there, and then when we got inside, they said that uh, they have a private party about to happen and that we would be on like a very short time limit, so we just decided to take off. And I could not match up that album cover. I looked around, it's changed considerably since then. So now we're just roaming down Sunset so they can see it. So they have to take off tomorrow a little earlier than they, they thought, like I mentioned earlier, so. I wanted to just kind of give them a little bit of the experience. This is. I know I've shown you guys this before. This is Jay Leno's Carney's Hamburger restaurant here inside the train car. 
Now there's another iconic place I haven't vlogged yet, but that used to be the Hyatt House, the famous Led Zeppelin rioting hotel. Most famously depicted in Cameron Crowe's Almost Famous. And it's changed a little bit, and it's changed the name to Andaz now. But this entrance is still the same styled entrance it always was. I think they may have even used this for the movie. This empty space right here is all that's left of the House of Blues. Then the comedy store is right here in front of us. The world famous comedy store. Kevin's hoping to run into Polly Shore. <laughs> God, it's amazing how many nights I used to spend here. It's hard to believe I used to be here almost every night for a long, long time. Look, they have the main room open. You can see the Andy Kaufman light up sign. Since this property used to be Ciro's, as you can see right here, you can actually see a picture of George Burns right here entering and walking up the same uh, staircase that we're walking up right now. And there's a picture of Ciro's before it was the comedy store, and there's Milton Berle performing on that famous main stage. Now, I don't think I ever told you guys this, but I was telling them, the secret about the Saddle Ranch is the only people that come here are tourists. From the moment you sit down, they pretty much are trying to sell you t-shirts and hats and everything at your seat, even before you get your menu, so. It's only a tourist place. And I tell people that because it looks so cool, you think it would be cool in there, but it's really, I don't really think it is, personally. Whoa, the dude carrying the cross. All right, well I just dropped off my friends because I have some plans for the next two hours, and then hopefully we're gonna meet up again tonight. All right, gang, while we're here, my friends are taking off in the morning back to Ohio, and they wanted to come to the HMS Bounty, which is maybe the one and only bar I used to hang out at when I was a drinker, so we're gonna meet up with them here. Wow, it's so crazy to be in here. I mean, I was just telling them, this used to be the bar that I used to come into all the time. Like, it was the only bar I ever really felt comfortable in. It's a, uh, of course, an old ship theme. All right, with your trip coming to an end, highlights of Los Angeles for this trip. You guys did a lot. I mean, I know what you've done. You've done a lot since you've been here. What are your highlights? The flora. The flora and fauna. <laughs> oh, really? Just the driving around, checking out stuff? and Just the, just the flora and fauna. The flowers. The... That's kind of cool, because like, like I said, you guys have done probably more in your trip on foot than anybody I know that's ever come to Los Angeles. You treated LA the way I treat every foreign city I go to. That's awesome. All right, well our time has come to an end. We're gonna leave the HMS Bounty now. Well my friends, I'm gonna call it a night. I hope you guys enjoyed getting to meet my friends. I hope you enjoyed getting to put a face to the voice that you've been hearing for probably a year and a half now on my music. Well, Kevin's music, I guess you'd say. And I hope you guys enjoyed all the places that we popped into today. Have a great night. We'll see you all tomorrow. Goodbye.